You want me to sit down here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me which way you want me to go. This way, that way. You guys ready? My name is Lila Oliver Asher. My name is John Omer. My name is Dave Matias, and I'm an Air Force vet. My name is Florent Groberg. Everybody calls me Flo. I am a veteran of the war in Afghanistan. My name is Charles Ragusa. I'm a veteran of the Korean War. I'm a uh, retired uh, U.S. Army Sergeant Major, and I'm a veteran of the Vietnam War. I enlisted in 1981. I'd grown up in uh, South Bronx, and for many people, the end of their lives are revolved around New York City. Nobody ever gets out, so I just thought maybe I'd get out and try something different. I started volunteering in 1942 for the USO as a sketch artist. It was important that the soldiers' spirits were kept up. The USO really realized that not only was it valuable for the uh, guy to have a portrait of his, um, himself, but it was also psychologically useful uh, for them to have somebody to pay attention to them and to talk to them for the half hour it took to do the drawing. I was drafted. Due to the fact that I'm, uh, I think, a loyal American, I had three brothers that served, I thought, I'm going to. I enlisted right out of high school. My uncle was an Army recruiter, so I walked off that stage, and he had me in the back of his sedan headed for Cleveland. <laughs> it was the best I remember. Any, any young female who was not awfully unattractive or plain ugly was so welcomed, and, and the boys made such a, a wonderful fuss over my being there. During the Gulf War, I was over in Italy, and we were um, supporting Operation Southern Watch. We knew even though we couldn't be deployed over there that we were still supporting the men and women out there. I had received orders for a place called South Vietnam. I had no clue where South Vietnam was. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even spell it. My first impression when I got on the ground was just surreal. Uh, just the idea of the understanding that I was now in a combat zone and there were actual human beings that were trying to kill us. We went to Pusan in Korea. We were working our way up slowly to replace these troops that were coming off the line. But when we got there, we were like two days before the armistice came. We had no idea. And the company commander called everybody out to attention and said, gentlemen, the war is over. So now here we are. We were the uh, designated soldiers. We stayed on the DMZ. We slept in little pup tents on the ground for three or four months. They wanted to see if the armistice was going to hold. And it did. January 1968 is when Tet Offensive started. It was nonstop combat. I think that was my most challenging thing, and I was able to overcome the tragedies that I saw and, and seeing your friends wounded and, or even killed and uh, still being able to function. It was, it was an experience that, uh, that I don't wish on anyone. Yes. Yeah, so. I was running a personal security detail, and we were just going to a security meeting in, in Sadabad. Kunar province when we were targeted by two suicide bombers and, you know, identify the first suicide bomber, maneuver from my position towards him, yelled at him, hit him, grabbed him, realized he had a vest on, suicide vest on, just try to get him away as fast as possible from everybody else. And then he detonated at my feet and um, he killed four of my friends and four incredible individuals, Command Sergeant Major Griffin, Major Gray, Major Kennedy, and Reggie Abdel Fattah. I received the Medal of Honor. Uh, when I received it, I accepted it, I put it on my neck, but with the understanding and that it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to the four individuals who did not come home on a specific day on August 8, 2012. The first time I uh, interacted with the USO, I had a chance to go into the USO that was in downtown Saigon, and I was able to uh, sign up and make a telephone call home to my mom. The first thing <laughs> my mother said was, where are you at? And I said, I'm in South Vietnam, in Saigon. How much does this phone call cost me? She was asking me. So one of the ham radio operators came on and said, excuse me, ma'am, but this, uh, this is a free service we're doing for the service members through the USO. The USO gives you a, a break. One evening, the company commanders told us, tomorrow morning, get ready, have your bags packed, we're going on a hike. It was a long hike. Then we got to an open field, and at the bottom low part was a stage. And then he said, introducing Miss Marilyn Monroe. Well, I thought there was going to be an earthquake. And she come out, and these two three-star generals tripping over the stage with that big camera, the lights. She sang and danced. I don't know who was listening, but... <laughs> 
And that was wonderful. I mean, it was like uh, somebody put me on an elevator, took me to the 10th floor. I attended a USO event in D.C. It was really nice how they did everything because while there, I discovered that I had one guy uh, had lived in the same housing project that I lived in. Uh, another guy had went to a school uh, that I went to also. Even though uh, the military is one family, it became even closer. And I think I could definitely thank the USO for that. We need that support system. We need that teammate. I, I just kind of looked at the USO as that, that, that perfect teammate to allow me to go home at times, no matter where you are. In the world, their USO is there to support you. Uh, it's been pretty special. I started volunteering for the USO in November of 2012. Take me out of uniform, but you can't take the soldier out of me. You know, so I still, I, I love being around these soldiers. I love being able to help them, answer questions for them, or you know, even just sitting there listening to them. And I see myself in them, and I, that's why I'm here. The 75th anniversary of the USO is wonderful. I think that it's the continuation of something that was answered a need wonderfully in World War II, and it's wonderful to know that they're still answering the need of those soldiers who, who need that service. I hope they have another 75 after this. They do a really good job for us. I mean, I think sometimes it's like a home away from home, and it helps us um, stay together. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't change your thing. To you nice people in the USO, I love you very much and please don't change a thing.